Background checks for purchasing a firearm are important. Ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Community policing and programs that keep neighborhoods safe and keep folks out of trouble. These efforts work, they save lives. Guns are not the problem here. The gun laws that we pass, the gun control kind of things that the president wants to do are only gonna impact law-abiding citizens. Criminals don't pay attention to those laws. We have a lack of prosecution, and we've declared war on the police, and that is backfiring on those who have done it. Well, a little bit of reaction now to the president's crime prevention program announced just a short time ago at the White House. Want to bring in our panel now, Ben Dominich, publisher of The Federalist, Harold Ford Jr., former Tennessee congressman, and Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina and CEO of Empowerment and Inclusion Capital. And gentlemen, nice to see you all tonight. Trey, you heard the president a bit earlier today. Will this make a difference? Let's begin there. Well, Bill, what I found stunning was uh, hearing Joe Biden say that when gun prosecutions actually were way down under President Obama with, with, with Joe Biden as the vice president. So, yeah, I mean, keeping guns out of the hands of people who are criminally inclined is a great idea, which is why we already have laws that control who can have weapons, what kinds of weapons you can have, and where you can have them. But those laws do no good if they're not enforced, and prosecutions were down under the Obama-Biden administration. Harold, how did you see it today when the target was all about guns? Look, I think that the gun issue, Trey, thanks for having me on first off. I think Trey is, is, is right in a huge way. We have to prosecute uh, uh, laws that are on the books. We have to prosecute those who violate gun laws on the books. But I think we've got to go a little further. I think we've got to take an assessment of what's working and what's not working. And you have to wonder, how can these kids, these gang members in Chicago, where we've really focused a lot on over the last several weeks, who can't seem to find fresh fruit, a good book, a dental office visit in their neighborhood, but somehow or another can find hands, find their hands on guns and are able to commit all these awful crimes. I think we ought to think about ways in which to learn who owned these guns before, where were these guns manufactured, not to limit anyone's Second Amendment rights, but to make sure that we're helping police officers and moms and dads and grandparents and communities across the country who for the life of me, I'm also wondering how do all these guns flood into these neighborhoods and communities where we largely have black kids and brown kids and oftentimes poor kids with, with very few opportunities. I think the focus has to be as much there as it is on prosecuting the laws that we have on the books today. When we're looking at crime in America, carjackings, rapes, auto theft, arson, it's all up in so, so many of these big cities. And uh, Ben, the president was criticized immediately after that for, for not having much vigor or enthusiasm in his delivery. How did you rate that? Well, first off, I will say that I think that the president should probably uh, stop trying to quote America's founding generation. He once again garbled another uh, quote. He's done this repeatedly. Uh, if I have to pick between Thomas Jefferson and Joe Biden, I think you know uh, which side I'm going to be on. But when it comes to this gun issue and the way that he's putting it forward, look, we're, we're talking about a White House that within the last 24 hours has engaged on both crime in big cities and on the border, sending Kamala Harris uh, to there, as we'll be discussing in a minute, um, in a way that I think uh, is a signal about the message that they're receiving from internal political polls and indications about the uh, direction that Hispanic voters in particular are taking in this country. Hispanic voters, particularly the middle class Hispanic voters across the country, have, are not down with this agenda that the Democratic Party is pushing. They are not down with their agenda when it comes to the border, when it comes to policing, when it comes to schools, when it comes to critical race theory, when it comes to any of these other aspects. And I think that this is really kind of a desperate attempt to hedge against what many Democrats feel is going to be a wave election in this midterm uh, that sweeps Republicans into power in the Congress. And I think that, unfortunately, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, are not going to be the kinds of messengers who are going to change the minds of a lot of different voters across this country who do not see what they like, what they would like to see from inner city politicians, from urban politicians who they do not feel are representing their best interests. We, we may, say that play out, may see that play out over the next year and a half and how that goes. Uh, meanwhile, earlier today in America news, uh, Newsroom, we, we spoke with police in New York and California in Michigan. And Trey, the 
One theme they all came back to was the morale of the police officers in these big cities. Have a listen to some of this right here now. When you uh, vilify police to such an extent, uh, the police feel like you're in a darned if you do, a darned if you don't environment. And uh, I know most police officers, including myself, we got up to save lives, not have our hands tied and watch people become victimized. There's no fear out there. The police departments, unfortunately, can't do their jobs like they used to, don't want to do their jobs like they used to do them. And that's unfortunately the situation. So you, it's great. You want to get guns off the street. How are you doing it? Law enforcement, prosecutors, district attorneys, legislators, and most importantly, the communities we serve, we need to work together to get these uh, the guns off the street. And, and that starts with funding the police. So, Trey, what would you say about the message today from the president as it goes to the men and women in blue? Well, I would have liked to have heard more. I mean, look, here's the reality. And, and unlike Joe Biden, I've actually prosecuted cops. Uh, get rid of all the bad ones, punish them to the fullest extent of the law, and then appreciate the other 99%. But for a year, I mean, we had a hard time distinguishing between arsonists and cops. You got the vice president bonding people out who are accused of crimes. And now Joe Biden is talking about getting tough on crime. Look, it's a lot easier when you just stay tough on crime. Don't decide you're going to do it this summer. Stay tough on violent crime because no other right matters if you're dead. I don't care about your right to free speech. It ain't going to do you much good if you're dead. Uh, a week away from the 1st of July. Gentlemen, stand by here in a moment.